Hey folks, Julian here, and welcome to the second installment of the Developer Update series, the series where we pull back the curtain and talk to some of the people who are involved in the development of these products here at Rode. Now I have with me at the table here, Tristan from the new product development team. Hi, Tris. Hey, Julian, how are you going? I'm well, how are you? Very well, thank you. That's good. Now we are talking about the Rodecaster Pro 2, of course, and we're gonna be talking about the next firmware update for this product. And then we're also going to talk about the beta testing period uh, that we're going to be jumping into later and the program that's involved there. So stick around for that because we're going to be talking about some of the prizes as well. Now, before we get into that, can we talk about the firmware update 1.0.5 and some of the features that are going to be included in this update? Sure. So pretty exciting update. Uh, two uh, completely new features for the Roadcaster Pro 2, uh, as well as some small UI tweaks as well, kind of based on uh, user feedback. So uh, the big one that people have been asking for is the introduction of the routing table. Uh, so you can find this under uh, settings, in outputs, and then under routing. And this is where you can see uh, the kind of custom mixes that each of the digital outputs has. So by default, uh, for instance, we're right now looking at USB 1 chat. It's set up to be a mix minus. Um, if you wanted to, you could turn off that mix minus by giving it the main mix. We don't recommend generally doing that if you're going to use it uh, as a communication device. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, if you're on Zoom or on Discord, uh, you don't want um, the sound of the uh, guests going back to them. Um, and that's what a mix minus does. So you can see here, if we were to turn it to main mix, um, you do actually get a warning that it can give unwanted feedback if using correctly. Um, but then we also have this introduction of the third option, which is the custom. And what this is, is a complete uh, matrix of what is going to the um, USB 1 chat um, output. And you can see that um, USB 1 chat is deactivated. Um, this is kind of implying a standard mix minus, but then you can also go through and deactivate other channels to, being, um, to going to that particular device. So for instance, if you had a, you know, a game sound coming in over USB 2, um, you know, typical of a dual PC setup, now you can exclude that output from going to um, your USB 1 chat. So if you are on Discord um, and you didn't want them to be hearing your game sound, which is um, you know, quite important, then now you can kind of set that up accordingly. That's incredible. That's exactly what people were talking about um, and that we were talking about in the previous episode, you know, people being able to select exactly what they send to which channel. So that's yep. amazing. Yeah. And this is available on um, all uh, output uh, digital outputs. So you have um, USB 1, which you can see is set up to be main mix. Mm. Um, so this is typically the device that you would use um, to send to your stream or to record into a door. Um, uh, we then have USB 1 chat, which we were just talking about. USB 2, again, uh, that had uh, the configurable mix minus in the original firmware. So you could go between main mix and mix minus. Uh, but now again, you also have the ability to create a custom mix that's actually going back out to USB 2. So if you were um, say in a dual PC setup, if you did have like um, game chat going and you wanted to use that as your um, input device for that, um, now you can kind of set up a custom mix to go to your game chat. Uh, and also Bluetooth. So um, if you have a phone call, um, you can select exactly what channels are being sent to that, to that phone call. Again, um, by default is set up with a mix minus. So that's, yeah, pretty exciting update. Um, and um, we're really, really looking forward to hearing the feedback from the beta program. So the second feature update uh, to this new firmware will be the ability to turn off the multi-track send out of USB 1 main. And this can be found under multi-track. And again, you get the same options now as you do for recording. So uh, we can see here we're set to pre-fader, but you can turn the multi-track off. And what this means is you get just the stereo mix uh, out of USB 1 main. And the reason for this is we found from um, feedback from the community that there are some applications, um, you know, browser-based uh, applications on PC uh, that don't like the multi-track uh, output. So having the ability to send just a stereo signal is um, going to increase the compatibility with a lot more of those um, uh, pieces of software. So yeah, another, another cool update for this firmware. Amazing. And Finally, um, a few small tweaks to the homepage uh, in, the, in the kind of UI. We now have um, the ability to distinguish when a fader is completely off by representing it on the screen. So you can see here, um, these faders are grayed out. And what this effectively shows is um, when the fader is absolutely at the bottom position. 
Um, where this is important is with the auto mute function that we have for the monitor outputs, where um, as soon as you raise a microphone um, fader, it will mute the speakers to um, avoid unwanted uh, feedback uh, if you have that particular setup. Having the uh, faders gray out just kind of is a really clear indication that this microphone is off. Um, and where this can be uh, quite useful is if you do have microphones assigned to your virtual channels, then you know that, um, that they're not turned on and you haven't accidentally left it a little bit up and you're wondering why your speakers aren't turning off. So again, Great. another very useful piece of feedback that we've implemented here. Uh, and then and I heard you were affectionately calling them Tic Tacs earlier. Is that something within the dev team? <laughs> yeah, we can't help ourselves. They do look like little Tic Tacs, so uh, that has been the, <laughs> the developer name. <laughs> uh, and finally, um, to the virtual channels, um, when you have them uh, soloed or muted, uh, it will actually represent on the screen that those uh, buttons are active. So you can at all times um, see what's happening to those virtual devices. Um, which is just, again, uh, making it clearer uh, on the home screen as to what's happening. Great. I know a lot of those features are something that the community has been asking for since the last developer update. So very interesting to see them appearing now. Now, this version, version 1.0.5, is going to be the very first firmware update that appears on the new beta testing program that we have for the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, this beta testing program is an opportunity for you to get a hold of this new firmware update, try it out in your setups, uh, see what's working for you, see what's not. Give us a little bit of that feedback and suggestions about what you like. But then also we can take that feedback and make improvements to the firmware update. This firmware version 1.0.5 is available on the beta testing program very, very soon. So if you jump into the description below, you can sign up or learn more. Now, we should also mention that there are monthly prizes available for those who give us feedback with this beta testing program. So if you want to win a little bit of loot from Rode, make sure you sign up to this beta testing program and give us some of that feedback. Uh, use the link in the description, as mentioned before, to join up to that program. Uh, if you have any other questions for us or if you have any suggestions or feedback on the product, make sure you drop them in the comments section below or contact us and the service team. But until then, we will speak to you guys later. See you guys.